kick off with coal because that's where we really saw the pressure coming to the fore. It was no surprise there. It seemed that most analysts had expected coal production to come under pressure given the uh, scenarios that were playing out in Australia. I think there was more than enough evidence on television that this would be the case as well as from its peers and their reports. Um, their production was down substantially, certainly quarter, uh, quarter on quarter. I think it was 38% and 14% down year on year. Um, I think it's important to know this is the metallurgical coal, coking coal, the coal used for making steel rather than the thermal coal. Their thermal coal operations were left largely untouched in the south of Australia. Um, uh, the floods were devastating. Um, I think their production, as I say, was down 38%. Rio Tinto's production, one of their peers in the area's production, was down 29%. Um, the real question is where to from here. And I think a lot of people were hoping for a relatively rapid recovery. But I think that's looking increasingly unlikely. The companies indicated they don't see a full recovery, certainly in this financial year yeah. and possibly in this calendar year. And, you know, it's not just a mine issue. It's not just the mines that are flooded, but the rail and the infrastructure and the ports are damaged. And that actually takes a long time to fix up. So this is going to be with us for a while. Well, it's quite fascinating to see that uh, the big names, BHP Billiton and, of course, the likes of Valle and the other big names, mm -hmm. are allocating a lot of money and capex spent uh, for uh, ensuring that those operations then get back on track. The question is, what kind of deficit could we see on the coal market, given the fact that BHP Billiton's uh, production numbers have come down significantly, or don't you think it'll have a big Oh, no, impact? no. You, you, we're going to see a very significant deficit in the market, and mm -hmm. you can actually see it in pricing at the moment. Um, this quarter's metallurgical well, benchmark hard coking coal settlement was up 47% in the previous quarter to $330. That's virtually unprecedented, and that's really on a very tight supply situation at the moment. Mm. Uh, let's shift gears a bit and looking at iron ore production, where we did see things uh, relatively steamy there, which is a good thing mm. going forward as well, because it's really been met with a lot of demand. Yes. Um, well, I mean... To a large extent, our view on BHP's results is better than expected, and to a large extent, that's actually driven by their iron ore performance. I mean, they were down marginally, I think, a percent. But you can compare that with their peers, like, again, Rio Tinto or Fortescue, who are both down about 16%. So they did really well in iron ore. Yeah. And, you know, iron ore prices have started picking up again, and it's, there's a supply aspect to it, not only out of Australia, but out of India as well, and falling grades in China itself. But... Um, I think the really interesting story for all, all the iron ore producers is the volume plans that everyone has in terms of bringing new capacity online. So yes, BHP's production isn't maybe what we were hoping for in this quarter, although not necessarily down quarter and quarter. But for instance, they're looking to grow at 85 million tonnes in the next couple of years. Out of well, it's also, I mean, the Australian floods also impacting steel production in Australia, and that was uh, the coal output, uh, steel making coal output tumbling 18% from yes. a year earlier. So that also impacting the Absolutely. iron steel scenario. Absolutely. But I mean, I think the, the huge impact has been, a, it's been much more significant in coking coal yeah. versus iron ore. Um, the floods in Queen, Queensland have had a much more devastating impact on, on coking coal production. Um, plus, you know, Queensland perform, uh, plays a much more crucial role in global coking coal supply than Western Australia does in iron ore supply. Uh, with regards to copper, um, looking at that copper price, I've been watching it with uh, well, a lot of fascination. As you should. <laughs> as you should. It's a fascinating $10, topic. $10,100 a tonne, if I'm not mistaken, earlier this year. Yes, We're now was. sitting at $9,200 mm. a tonne or so. It's come under pressure and it's sort of been slipping below the radar because everyone's been focusing on uh, the gold price, which yes. has been hitting uh, new all-time highs. Uh, but with regards to, I mean, it's an industrial uh, metal. Mm. We know that it, um, China is, of course, uh, using a lot of, uh, cop of the copper and it's also a gauge in terms of uh, a barometer of the health of the global yeah. economy. When you see w what BHB Bulletin is up to, do you think that they could be tapping the brakes on copper production? Do you think that we're currently in oversupply? No, I don't think we're in oversupply um, from mine production point of view. Um, I think what we're seeing at the moment in the why the price is coming off and the talk that I see and what people are telling me is that it's really a concern about stockpiles, so actual physical stockpiles in China and, pot and potentially those being liquidated, in other words, being sold. So you've got a short-term supply excess on the market. The long-term story about there being a shortage of new mine supply to supply physical demand is firmly intact. And in fact, we can see this in BHP's results. Um, the production from Escondido, the world's largest copper mine by far, um, was actually down. And this has been a trend that's been in place for a few years now, and it's not just at Escondida. It's really on falling grades. BHP is in a process of investing now to try and turn this around and free up higher grade areas. But that's not going to come through till 2013. Yeah. And really, this is a global phenomenon. Finding new sources and new copper deposits to exploit is very difficult. It's not happening. 
and so it should actually sustain high in copper prices, sorry, in the long term. When you say sustain copper prices, are we looking at $10,000 a ton? Are we looking more towards 9000 There, well, <laughs> in the long term, I, 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 I think there's an open question whether $10,000 is the run one. Certainly not what we, what we are forecasting as a house.